Hello, everyone. Uh, now that we have become familiar with vector components, it's time to apply vector components to a real world situation. So we're going to be doing that today. Uh, before we get started on our real world application, we're going to apply vector components, our knowledge about them, to some operations that we're already familiar with. So things like scalar multiplication. And I want to just focus on and, and discuss that the only vector operation we've learned so far is vector addition. And the only way that we've learned how to do vector addition is graphically, so the tip-to-tail method. And, and we're drawing these things by hand, so when we do that, we're going to make mistakes. Doing graphical tip-to-tail vector addition is a good way to double-check your work, but it shouldn't be the only tool in our toolbox. So, so vector component form is going to make us much more efficient and much more accurate at doing some of the operations that so far we've only been doing graphically. So the most basic operation we can do in component form is scalar multiplication or multiplying a vector by a scalar. If we wanted to do this in previous classes, we would do it graphically. Say we have some vector w and we multiply it by the scalar 1 fifth. We knew that the new vector would point in the same direction as vector w and that its magnitude would be one fifth the magnitude of vector w. So doing this graphically is a skill that we need to have, but if we want to be more exact, we should do it in component form. So we have a generic vector written up here on the board. So we have vector M, which has a vector component for each of the Cartesian unit vectors. And we want to multiply this uh, generic vector by some generic scalar, let's say the scalar A. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have vector M multiplied by the scalar A. We rewrite vector m in component form. We have the multiplication of a scalar a on the outside of the parentheses. So we have vector m in component form here inside the parentheses. Because what we're doing is scalar multiplication, we can distribute the multiplication in to each of these vector components. So what we get as a result is vector m in component form where the scalar a has been multiplied by each of the vector components. So let's do an example of this really quick. Let's say, let's revisit the vector w we were talking about earlier. Let's say vector w is this vector here. So it is written in component form, has a component for each of the Cartesian unit vectors, and we want to multiply it by the scalar 1 fifth. So we have 1 fifth multiplied by the vector w, and we rewrite the vector w in component form. Remember, what we're doing is scalar multiplication, so we can distribute the multiplication into each of the vector components. So what we're going to get as a result is 15 divided by 5 x hat minus 5 divided by 5 y hat. And whenever we simplify that, we're going to get positive 3 out here, so we get positive 3 x hat, and whenever we simplify this, we get 1, so we get negative 1 y hat. And this is how we multiply a vector in component form by a scalar. We use the distributive property of scalar multiplication to multiply each of the vector components by the scalar we are multiplying by. So the second operation that we're going to learn in component form is vector addition. Addition and scalar multiplication are things that we've used previously in this class. Uh, the distributive property of scalar multiplication is probably something you've seen before this class. 
And in a similar fashion, whenever we do vector addition in component form, it's going to look similar to algebra that you've probably learned before this class. So let's say we have some generic vector, vector m, written in component form using the Cartesian unit vectors here. And we have some second vector, vector r, written in component form here. And we want to add these two together. So we have vector m plus vector r. Whenever we do this, we substitute each vector for its component form. And let me clear this up a little bit. How do we do this in component form? We're going to combine like terms. So in our original expression, we had ax hat plus dx hat. We rewrite this as a plus d in parentheses multiplied by x hat. And the same thing for the other vector components as well. b y hat plus e y hat is going to become b plus e in parentheses multiplied by y hat. So let's go ahead and apply this to some, a, a real example, something that uses numbers. So let's say we have vector t written in component form here and vector l written in component form here. Uh, vector addition and vector subtraction are fundamentally the same operation. So the things that we just discussed about vector addition will apply to our example problem all the same. So if we want to find vector t minus vector l, what we do first is we substitute the component forms for these vectors, right? So we have 3x hat plus y hat plus z hat minus, and I'm going to write vector L in parentheses. So I have x hat plus 3y hat minus 2z hat. So the reason I wrote vector L in parentheses is that I need to distribute this subtraction, distribute this negative one into the parentheses. So we are actually subtracting by vector L. So what is this going to become? Instead of a positive x hat, this is going to become negative x hat. So let's go ahead and write that. We're going to have negative x hat negative 3y hat and positive 2z hat. So at this point, we can combine like terms. So we see we have 3x hat minus 1x hat. So we're going to rewrite that as positive 2x hat. We see that we have positive y hat minus 3y hat. So we're going to rewrite that as minus 2y hat. And we see we have positive z hat plus 2z hat. So we're going to rewrite that as plus plus 3z hat. So whenever we do vector addition in a component form, we combine like terms and vector addition and vector subtraction are fundamentally the same. So we can use the combining of like terms in both situations. Another vector operation that we've learned and an operation that we can absolutely do in vector component form is the dot product. However, because the dot product is so important, we're going to dedicate an entire session just to doing the dot product in vector component form. So we're going to do that later in this module. For now, we're going to concentrate on other basic operations in component form.
With all of the similarities we've seen doing operations in a vector component form, things like grouping together like terms whenever we do vector addition in a vector component form, you might be asking yourself, can I do another operation I'm familiar with in a vector component form? Can I do vector division in a component form? Now the answer is going to be no, but let's talk about why it's no. So remember that vectors represent real physical things. Vector addition can be applied to the real world. Later in this video, we're going to use vector components and vector addition in a real world problem. We're going to apply our knowledge to the real world to help us understand how the world works. Because vectors describe things that are real, the operations that we use with vectors must describe something real as well. It must have a physical interpretation. Think of it this way. Whenever you divide two scalars, say like you have two oranges and you want to divide it up into two groups. So you have two oranges, you divide them up into two groups, each containing one orange. Whenever you divide a scalar by another scalar, that makes sense. It has a physical interpretation. But what if we try to do the same thing with vectors? What if we divide vector t by vector m? Remember that vectors have magnitude and direction. So does dividing left by up have a physical interpretation? It doesn't. So vector division does not have a physical interpretation. It doesn't make sense. Dividing by a vector doesn't represent anything in the real world. So vector division is something that we cannot do in component form. Vector division is something that we can't do graphically. We will never do vector division because that's not an operation that exists.